Today, I'm gonna share some of my best secrets to getting big, beautiful harvests every year. And some of these may surprise you, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I do wanna get right into the video, but before I do, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up so it gets pushed out to more people, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Before you even start putting plants in your garden, it's important to work on your soil first. Yes, soil is really important to plant health and getting a really good harvest. You need to build your soil up and let it be naturally healthy and living. So ways that you can do this is you can add compost and manure and even mulch will help build the natural living nutrients that you need in your soil for healthy plants. Next up is choosing the right plants and varieties of plants before planting in your garden. Different types of plants do well in different areas. So a good way to find out what does well in your area is talking to a local nursery or a local farm. When me and dad did a farm tour with the Master Gardeners, they talked about some different varieties of tomato plants that do well here. Well, those varieties I didn't even have incorporated into our garden. Now I did add them this year and I'm excited to see how they turn out. But this is a really important step and a reason that you should work with only local nurseries when buying plant starts because they're gonna know best what grows well in your area. It's also important to plant at the right time. Not only is it important to choose the right plants and varieties, but timing is also important. Some plants need to be planted right after your last frost so that they have a long enough growing season to finish out. Some plants can wait a little longer. Some plants like a light frost, so you either need to plant them at the end of summer or in very early spring. These are all things that need to be thought about. And another thing that you could talk to your local nurseries about, they're going to sell the plants at the right time to plant them. The next thing I'm gonna discuss that's not very often talked about is do plants really need as much space as it says on the back of a seed packet? My answer to this is no. And if you've watched any of our planting videos, I've talked about this before, where I usually push the spacing to about half or really whatever I need to make the bed look full. And usually if I end up seeing a space later, usually a plant is going to end up there. <laughs> Um, another thing to keep in mind is that where it says row spacing on the back of this seed packet, if you're planting in a garden bed, which I know a lot of us do, it you don't need to follow any of those row spacing recommendations. That is just so that you can walk in between your plants, and you're not going to be doing that in a garden bed. So you do not need to space out your plants for rows. Your row spacing should only be what the seed, what the actual plant spacing is, and this way you can get the most out of your garden beds. Another thing that you can do to save up on space is things like squash, melons, cucumbers, beans, anything that can grab onto a trellis, make sure it has one to grab onto so that, or you can just even plant it along a fence. And that way your plant's growing up, it's not laying on the ground, it's not taking up any unnecessary space. Another thing that this helps with too is it's not touching the soil and it can't, it won't contract as many diseases or pests from laying on that soil. The next thing is do plants really need as much water as they tell you they need? Well, now I'm about to share a tip that I got from the Texas Master Gardeners themselves. And what they tell you, especially living in a hot climate, is that by watering your plants as much as they tell you to water your plants, you'll keep your plants roots at the surface of the bed. And if you live in a hot climate like we do, then that actually ends up killing your plant because it can't escape the heat. The roots get burned by the heat and they can't escape it by being cool and dark under the soil. They're near the surface and it's just way too hot there for them. While some of your warm season crops may survive this, like tomatoes, peppers, sweet potatoes, a lot of your crops are going to die. They recommend watering once a week if it hasn't rained. So I'm going to let you guys know that because of how much rain we've gotten here, I haven't watered my plants since planting or transplanting them into our garden. I know that sounds crazy, but if you don't believe me, go back and watch all of our harvest videos. We've gotten a lot out of this garden and we haven't watered once. I may have watered some tomato plants twice after planting only because they look sad. But other than that, I haven't watered at all. 
and during the summer I won't water unless the plants look like they need it. So you can tell this because the leaves will start to turn slightly yellow and as long as you catch it in time it won't kill your plants and then you just give them a nice deep soaking and move on. This way you don't need to spend tons of time watering your plants. It's actually better for them not to water them at all. Um, another way that you can help keep the moisture in the soil and keeping it dark and cool is by adding that layer of mulch and it also suppresses weeds. Were you surprised by any of these tips or did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments below and I am planning on coming out with a new garden tour really, really soon. But in the meantime, go ahead and watch our last one.